Are you ready? Can crush us. Hey. It don't really get no better than better this. The than. podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the can crush a nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. ding, ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Gotta shout out to the Miz and Duke the dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah. This the show you need an and it ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crushers wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Let's go. Hey, this is J-A-C. And crack you up a cold one. Sit down on your couch and listen to Can Crushers right now. I think JAC it needs acknowledged over that. That's a presence bringing us into our Can Crushers Wrestling Spotlight. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to another Can Crushers podcast. I am your host, Mark the Mark Martinez. And as I said, it's a spotlight episode. And I am uberly happy to be having my guest on this week. Another Pittsburgh area girl to be talking about her first match, her first journey into professional wrestling. I want to know how she found this crazy sport, what kind of stuff she did prior and all that. I'm speaking of none other than Slammin' Sammy. Man, I love that name. So many things that I can think about. I have to make sure I ask her. Is she a baseball fan? Because slamming, I always think of like slamming home runs or just beating somebody in the back alley. That's a different, different talk, a different podcast that you guys can go down, whatever. But you understand that. Or slamming like a power slam, a body slam, so on and so forth. It's going to be a train wreck. My mind is all over the place. So I'm apologizing now to Sammy. I know she's on the line waiting to come on the show, but I'm going to apologize now because it's going to be ups and downs, ins and outs. It's going to be crazy. So much I want to talk about with Slam and Sammy. She just had her first match, so of course we have to talk about that. But of course, we have to pay the bills. I know you guys hate this part, but we have to. Contractually, we have to do this. Collar and elbow, hats, hoodies, and tees, all the cool things that Al Snow and the hooligans have down at Collar and Elbow. Go and buy everything you possibly can. You've heard me for years now telling you how much I love collar and elbow apparel. From uh, the the hoodies to the shirts to the joggers, everything. I have it all. It's amazing apparel. It, it just doesn't go bad. You know, you wash stuff, some stuff, and it just shrinks and all that. Collar and elbow doesn't do that. In amazing designs from Dusty to Macho Man to, you know, Remembrance Ones and all of that. When you check out a collar and elbow, use our promo code. It's Can Crushers. All one word, capital C and Can, capital C and Crushers, and you will save yourself 10% off the entire order. You won't be disappointed, fans. You really won't be disappointed. Don't forget, if you want any of the new stuff that WWEShop.com has, we have an affiliate code, and we're very transparent on here. Sometimes you get a discount, sometimes you don't. We don't know what items are discountable with our code, but you will help support us. That's in the show notes. Don't forget that we also have merch for Can Crushers as well. Head over to CrowdMade, type in Can Crushers, and check out our hoodies, shirts, and tank tops as well there. Guys, you heard me over the last couple weeks, months, whatever it is now, talking about Dubby. This is the energy drink for the average garbage man, the gamers, the whatever. I'm trying to get carbonation out of my life, essentially, okay, uh, in everything besides the week end carbonation that uh, I enjoy, but day to day carbonation, just too much. So I use Dubby now as my energy drink. Uh, no calories, no carbonation, no craziness. It just, it just really is. Two scoops in the morning in my shaker cup. Shake it up, drink it. From 4 o'clock in the morning when I take it until about 11 o'clock at night, I am good to go. It keeps me rocking and rolling. There's no crash at like 9 a.m., noon, or anything like that. It just gives you enough energy throughout the day 
tons of different flavors out there. As I said, mine, my go-to is Beach and Peach. I just, I love everything peach. But there's a sample pack out there, guys, if you want to try it. It's about 20 bucks, and you can get a 10% discount off of anything from Dubby from using our promo code. And, of course, it's Can Crushers. So make sure you check them out if you're looking for something to get away from that can drink, those carbonations that leave you bloated and all that. Dubby does not do that. My testimonial each and every week on that. Don't forget, you can listen to us anywhere, anywhere the podcasts are. iTunes, iHeart, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, BoxCast. The list goes on and on and on. We're on IMDb. The audio version of this is also on YouTube, so go like, subscribe, share, do all that cool stuff on YouTube as well. Join that page. Let's make that big and fantastic as the podcast is. But yeah, guys, do everything. Join the Can Crusher Nation and join the conversation and help us support indie wrestlers because this is what the spotlight's about. We love spotlighting independent wrestlers to find out the who, the why, the what, why they got into wrestling, why they love it so much. Throw in some silly questions. And yeah, don't forget our socials as well. Facebook, Instagram, X. Listen, we do stuff on threads, but it's a cesspool. But it's out there. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back. And Slime and Sammy is right around the corner. Hey, all you uh, stupid Regents math breeders out there. This is Amanda. I'm Elijah Dean. And you are listening to Can Crushers Podcast. Welcome back to Can Crushers, guys. You heard how excited I was to... Have my guest on. She is taking Rise, Pittsburgh, and essentially the Indies over after just one match. She's getting lots of love. Make sure she's on your radar. It's none other than Slammin' Sammy. Slammin', how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Listen, you have to still be living the high off of your first match, right? Yes, I am. What, what did it feel like before we get into how you loved wrestling and everything? Because I haven't spoken to anybody after a first match this quick in a long time. So give me all the feels. What were you doing that morning? Everything. Uh, it, it, it honestly felt so amazing. I remember the morning I woke up, I had nerves, you know, like good nerves. But it was just a super exciting morning. I mean, I had the adrenaline spike kick in. From the beginning of the morning, obviously, to the end of the night. And it, was, and it was such an exciting feeling being out there in front of the crowd and experiencing that energy that the crowd left off. So it was a very good night, and I, and I just loved it. It was everything that I dreamed it would be. Did, did you get any butterflies like two minutes prior to match? Because we know those curtains do magical things when we come out of them, but did, did you have a little bit like, oh, my God, this is really happening? Yeah, I did. Just before I got, I um, went out the curtain. Yep. It, it always happened. But then that curtain, you forget that you're alive, right? Yeah. Yeah, that do. That you do. So I did notice you, uh, you had to take a picture with Bradley. How, how was that after your first match? Because Bradley's Bradley, right? <laughs> yeah, it it was good honestly. Bradley has, you know, been nice to me I think throughout, throughout my whole journey for wrestling. Ever since the beginning, he was supporting me, you know, so he's a great guy. He really is a great guy. He, he listens and I throw him under the bus as much <laughs> as I can. So that's that's the best thing about it. Yeah. All right, so let's do the rewind essentially like who introduced you to wrestling? Mom, dad, Aunt Sally, Uncle Joe. How did you find this crazy sport? So my dad was a really big fan of wrestling. Like even like even before my my parents had me, had me, they were um dating and stuff. Like my dad was the biggest wrestling fan. He loved he loved WWE very much, you know, like when he was dating my mom, he had like the stone the stone cold merch on, the stone cold hat, the stone cold shirt just in and, and he and he loved he loved it very much you know and all this stuff he actually went to go um see undertaker and uh, mankind in pittsburgh at that hell in the cell match so that's very interesting to to figure to um find to find out and and when i was about three years old my dad my dad put it on put it on for me and and we would like imitate wrestling moves on the couch we we'd have fun 
Yeah. Nice. So me and your dad share a, a moment together because I was up in the nosebleed sections of that as well. That, that was probably my favorite <laughs> card of all time. Uh, unbelievable to see mankind go through that. So, yeah. Yeah. It's an awesome thing. So dad was beating the hell out of you as you were a child, essentially, <laughs> is what we're saying, right? Ch- child ab- abuse. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> You can hold that over on its head the rest of your life. But that's a great story. It really is. That's a way uh, I connected with my grandfather kind of doing like the same thing. He would show me like the old Ric Flair matches and Dusty matches as I was younger. So yeah, who did you love then? And I know the answer to this question. And everybody that follows you on Facebook knows the answer to this question. But anybody listening to the podcast, who did you love growing up? Honestly, the first the first thing that I loved growing up was obviously the group was obviously the group the Shield. I mean, they were they were a big impact in my life. I especially loved Seth Rollins as I as I kept as I kept growing up. I just enjoy I enjoyed watching both Seth Rollins and the Shield throughout my life. There was just something about about the Shield and Seth Rollins that kept me hooked and kept me on edge. They were. <clears throat> Seth Rollins is a very good is a very good wrestler in my opinion, and I obviously, and I obviously loved him to death. And the Shield made such an impact on, on wrestling history. You know, it's hard to forget about them. Oh, without a doubt, with it's still even even though they broke up so long ago, it made an impact this past WrestleMania, right? Yeah, they did. Who who else besides the Shield? Did, was there anybody else um, that you kind of transitioned to, Becky, or anybody like that? Um, um, there wasn't re- really too much too much of them, but I did. But I did have my have my um, I did have my um other favorites like like um Kane at the time period and all that stuff. Okay, it, it, mostly the Shield though. Mostly the Shield. Yeah, mostly the Shield. Okay, so we know. You're young in the professional wrestling business, but what have you done? Because I transition everything on the podcast that you're preparing for wrestling from the first match you and dad did until growing up and going to where you train. And I'll give you to give you props on that, especially because LaRusso will come through and punch me through the face if I don't. Um, (laughs) How did you train yourself to get to professional wrestling with other sports, essentially, what were you in, essentially? <clears throat> well, well, a long time ago, a long time ago, I played like, I played like other sports when I was like younger. But I would say like, like the main, like the main sport for me at the time was um, was karate. I did karate for like for like seven years, and um, I did jujitsu for about two and a half years. Both were very, both were very beneficial for to me in the long run. I feel I feel that karate gave me the confidence that I need to get to this point now where I am in life. And it was a great experience, a great chapter in my life. I would say it, it taught me everything that I needed to know and all that. Yeah. So when was that? I'm going to get ready to relate all that there. So when was that aha moment then that you're like, I'm doing this? You know, I've been through karate and the martial arts and everything. I know I can take over professional wrestling when was that moment that said yes i'm going honestly the moment the moment happened like very very vividly i remember i was like i was like seven or eight years old and i and i and i just came flat out and told and told my parents i really i really had no like no like nerves or thoughts about it i just came out and told them and told them hey i want to do this i want to be a be a pro wrestler so yeah, my mom. My mom thought that it was that it that it was a great thing. She didn't expect it to happen, but she has supported me over the years, and she's proud of me. And my dad has thought it thought it was awesome, and he still thinks it's awesome to this day. So, oh, without a doubt, you know, mom's probably your number one merch maker. Dad still wants <laughs> to train with you in the ring, so I completely see this, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So how do you go about, and this is where I definitely want you to give you props to where you're going to train and everything. How do you go about and find your training school? So I, so I found, so whenever I found my training school, I like to say that I was at the, I was at the um, end of my, um, at the end of my martial arts life. 
and I didn't and I didn't want to pull in to um, go get the black belt because that was that was the only rank that I didn't get coming out of um, martial arts and stuff. But I didn't want to go that. So so at so at the train center I went to, they um they one night had like an open house or like a seminar type of deal. So I so I went there and I was about like 15 years old. So I was like a, a, um, a sophomore in high school at the time while getting started getting started with all this so i went to the um so i went to this the open house or whatever i i did the open house we went we went through like a we went through like a trial then type of deal type of deal after that and and one of my the things that my instructor asked me he's like he's like do you love pro wrestling and i'm like yes obviously i i love pro wrestling that's with no shadow of a doubt i can sit here and talk about it forever if i could but um but um yeah that's that's how that that all got started and and he took and he took me into at um 15 year, years old which he nor- which my instructor normally doesn't um right there's doesn't, there, um, you're in PA everybody knows that that yes. you're in PA there's rules and regulations in, in PA that yeah you can train but you can't physically be on a show in, until the da, 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 time period right yeah right yeah yeah i was 15 at at the uh, at the time that he brought me in he didn't he didn't have to and we were looking at all the other options at the table like let's let her start at 16 or let's let her start at this age but then but then my instructor by the way my instructor brandon k if if anyone is is um unfamiliar with who that is one of the one of the best trainers in the air i would say he's been nothing but great to me throughout this whole time period so yeah, um, I was giving you props to say it but before we get too long done. It's Stronghold, guys. You've heard me talk yes. about it a ton of times. The Stronghold School in and around the Pittsburgh area, you know, has trained numerous stars out of the yes. area. So make sure you go there if you're looking into it. Mm-hmm. One that we will always say go to along with the um, the IWC one as well. Both of them amazing in the Pittsburgh area. So, all right, go ahead. Sorry, Sammy. <laughs> Yes, you're all right. Yeah, but but anyway, he did not have to bring me in at 15, but but he just said, you know what? I'll make this exception one time since she really loves it. And from there, we were starting off into something amazing. So, yeah. So you do that first. It, it's always a freebie. We we know this. You always do that first freebie one to go see if you really want to go through it. Everything. <laughs> You walk in and you're just full of piss and vinegar. You you know that you're <laughs> going to be ready for this. Tell me how you felt when you left, though. I I felt pretty amazing when I left. Honestly, I thought it was it was a great place from the time I walked in there. From the time I walked in in there, everybody was you know so accepting of me, saying hi to me and all that stuff, and just re- <clears throat> and just re- really just so polite to me and like they were ready to to welcome a new person in so they welcomed me with open arms and and after that I had a feeling like we picked the right place we picked we picked the place that I could go to and I could do this for so it felt like a family right off the bat yeah it did nice (laughs) have you been to local independence in in Pittsburgh before (laughs) have you kind of just you know have you heard about Rise or or IWC or any place like that, or were you always just a WWE gal? So a long a long time ago, actually, how we um how we um discovered um how we discovered Rise Wrestling back at the time was was whenever I was about um I was about thirteen years old, and me and my and me and my dad used to go to the um to the to the rise wrestling shows all the time and at that time they were um inside of the um laurel mall yep and and they're and they're just and it was just full of some of the some of the funnest memories i've ever had and and my dad i remember saw like a match card for them initially whenever we were when he was looking on facebook and my dad's like do you want to go and i'm like hell yeah i want to (laughs) go nice Nice. So you knew about it. You knew the the amount of amazing people that have been in there. And, and essentially, I'm sure you ran into Brandon before, and he, he's a talker. He can sell, and he's amazing. Yes, he is amazing. 
So, all right, that's day one of training, essentially. Down the line, because we've trained for a while now, did did a, a doubt ever cross your mind? A, at one point, it's like, man, I just, year in, two years in, that uh, this, this is just tougher than I thought. Yeah, I mean, I, I had that, like, whenever I was 15, I mean, I was just, like, starting off, and especially some... Especially some days, I feel like down the line that that it gets that it gets harder as you keep on on going to do it, especially with age and experience and and everything else. But like just like <clears throat> starting out within within those two years in that time period, I've I mean I've had my fair share of downfalls. I mean there's some I mean there's some nights that I've that I've even that I've even cr- cried because of how much it means to me and how much. I want the best for it and all that stuff for me. You can hear the passion in your voice when you just said that, just to let you know off script and all that. Thank you. you can hear <laughs> that. Then I'm like, man, if there's anybody that has ever been on the show that wanted it, you can just feel it the way that you're coming across <laughs> right now. So Sammy, big things for you, big Thank things you. for you. <laughs> So let's talk more in depth about that first match. Uh, we, we had the emotions and everything. How do you feel? Oh, yeah. Have you rewatched it already since your first match? I I have seen like little like little clips and stuff or little clips and stuff of it or whatever. I haven't watched like the like the full like the full match yet. I know my um my uh, parents report um, recorded it on a GoPro so. It'll be great when we get when we get that footage off of the GoPro and watch it. So okay, you felt you felt like every everyone. Listen, we we all bring down the fourth wall a little bit on podcast. You felt like everything <laughs> went well in the ring, and, and you know you were you and Loveless just brought it. Yeah, I feel like we I feel like we both brought it to the table too, and 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 look, Loveless is a is a is a is a great wrestler. I'll give her that. She's a She's been a good a good veteran in the ring, and sometimes she doesn't, you know, get as much respect as as she deserves. So I'll give her some flowers here for that. Look at you! Look at you! First match already given flowers after taking the <laughs> L, right? It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. So all right, th- this is the big question: Who is Slam and Sammy? And I'm actually going to turn it around to you this time. Normally, I say, I'll, "Let me give you three people that I think Slam and Sammy is." So young in the business, I want to hear like some of your people that you think is going to encompass Sammy essentially um, for move set for this that and the other. And I know you're going to say, "Well, myself times a hundred. Yeah, listen, that's the PC wrestling answer. <laughs> give yeah. give me three wrestlers that you've begged, borrowed, or steal some moves from essentially that you think is going to encompass who you are." Three wrestlers, I would say definitely, definitely like Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's a good, he's a very good one. I've watched him over the years and and stole some stuff off of him. I would say, I would say also Becky Lynch because she because she has that big old that big old underdog character, which is what what assen- what essentially I have through all my through all my fighting and experiences in life and stuff. So I took a little bit off that and then. <clears throat> And then I would say, and then I would say maybe, maybe some, maybe, maybe like, um, like, uh, Cody Rose, because he's just so, he's just like so great with kids, man. And you, and you gotta love that. So I had, okay. I had Becky. That's why I made reference earlier because I, (laughs) in the same clips that have been online, I have seen just some Becky stuff in you. I, I don't know what, but I'm like. Okay, this is her first match. How the hell do I break down one match that I can't steal anybody else's video from or anything? So I did see some Becky. You are amazing with kids by far. So, yes, you have a story to tell. So Cody as well. And then I went the generic route and I said Seth Rollins because he's your favorite wrestler of all time. So those were my three. So we're close. I didn't know the whole Stone Cold thing with Dad or I probably would have thrown it in there. But, yeah. All right, so let's take a break from wrestling a little bit and talk some nerd stuff, some random questions that we always throw in here on the podcast, and we'll get back into wrestling. 
So Sammy doesn't have anything to do wrestling wise for the night. No training, no matches, no anything. What are some nerd things that you like to do, Sammy? Oh, ner- oh, nerd things I love to do. I'd say, I'd say, I, I honestly love, I honestly love to watch pro wrestling all the time. I, I really do. I love to like, I love to like watch things like wrestling documentaries and wrestling TV shows and all that stuff. There's, there's always a lot of that out there. Yeah, there is, there is. Um, video games, music, anything like that. What, what's your number one song? Let's let me force feed some of these to you. What's your number <laughs> one song out there right now? Uh, uh, for me, I'm not as much of a like like video game player. I've never, I never have been. I mean, I mean, I ha- I mean, I have a Nintendo Switch. I just have it. <laughs> I I'm just so busy that I don't get around to using it. You know. Right. But like. But like I would say for like for like so for like music and songs and stuff, I'm a very big eighties eighties music person. Like I'm just really down deep into eighties music. Like like anything like Guns N' Roses, Motley Crue, ah, uh, that stuff is great. Give your dad a big pat on the back right now if he's beside <laughs> you because that's dad. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. where I am with music. Um Again, without no wrestling, you know, hanging out with friends, this, that, and the other, just kind of the normal, a la teenage life, right? Um, I don't, I don't have to, I don't have too many friends outside of pro wrestling, so. <laughs> well, that's that's good though too. Sometimes that really is. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, I really have no social life. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's bad, but it's true. <laughs> no, if you continue to go to the gym and stuff, it you know, some things can happen that, you know, I don't know, I don't, friends get jealous that you're going to kick ass and take names and they're going to sit at Permani Brothers for the next 30 years, right? It, it, it is what it is. It is what Probably, it is. yeah. All right, we have uh, random questions coming up right now. One is from a past guest, and here it is. Hey, what's up, guys? It is Lunik, the Shadow Assassin here, and I have a question for you. Who is the greatest villain, in your opinion? Uh, who's the greatest villain? Well, well, I've se- I've seen like a lot, like a lot of villains in in pro wrestling, and especially like in TV shows in general or whatever. If I had, <clears throat> if I had to pick anybody who'd be like a, like who is like a good villain, whatever. I would I would say right now in the pro wrestling world, Dominic Mysterio. Oh yeah. He he is doing so good right now. Like he can he could like when he holds that microphone up to his lips, he can barely even get a word in. So <laughs> Dom is by far so over in the number one right now. Yeah. I agree. I completely agree. Yeah. Were you a fan? This is horrible. This wasn't even a silly question, but it pops into my head. Were you a fan of Dom when he was like with his dad and he was a goody two shoes? Yeah, I I think I think during that time period, yeah, I would say that I was a fan fan for him because he was starting to get his feet wet in the business. But I really don't think yet that he found like his um, I would say his um his um his um lick for lick if you will in the yeah. in the wrestling business. I think over time, as you as you see, he's had to um had to had to work had to work hard and have to like step it up a little bit to get him to where he is today. Yeah. He's so much better as a bastard. He really is. Yes, he is. <laughs> he really is. All right. Here comes the random questions. If you could guarantee one thing in life besides money, of course, what would it be? If there's one, if there's one thing that I can, uh, that I could guarantee in life, it would be that, that I always put my best foot forward every time I I enter in the wrestling ring. That I'm always gonna be, that I'm always gonna be on my best, even on even on my worst days ever. I'm gonna do everything I possibly can to be on my best foot. Okay, I love that answer. I love it. So when you hear Slam and Sammy, all right, listen. This is because I'm 47 and I'm always hungry. Okay, so it sounds almost like a sandwich too. So, what would be on the Slam and Sammy sandwich? I honestly think that the that the that the Slam and Sammy sam- sandwich would just be would just be like a would be like a classic like BLT, 
because there because there's nothing that you can do to like to like change the change the BLT. You really you can't do anything to change a BLT. A BLT is just all around a good sandwich. And if you and if you add anything and if you add anything to it, then I feel like then I feel like a you ruin it or you spoil it. So that's perfect. That's again perfect. I I, I thought you were gonna go maybe a little. And I know you're not bougie. I know you're not bougie. <laughs> but I thought maybe you're gonna like, oh, something on a, a bagel or something, and you just caught me off the surprise. Damn, I want a BLT right now. So yes, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely perfect. This one's gonna be hard for you, I think. I really think, and I, I completely set it up. The other two were generated. You know, I use a generator, bring up questions, yada yada yada. Right. This this one's fitted for you. We know that you love the shield. Okay, we right. know that. Mm -hmm. Give me three active wrestlers across anywhere that would make up the new shield. And you can't say Roman, John Moxley, or Seth at all. So give me a new okay. shield. Um, all right. If we're gonna if we're gonna go for honesty here, if I if I had to pick um anyone for a new shield, I would say I feel like Adam Cole would be a good one to make for the sh for a new shield, and then like, and then like, I, and then honestly, I think I think I think Edge too. Edge would be, Ed Edge is good in my opinion. He's very oh, he's um, amazing. He's yeah, he's very great. He's amazing. And then, then I would then I would say somebody then around around the around the course of like. I would I would say MJ, MJF too cuz he'd be cuz he because he would be like a great I feel like he'd be like the good like planner in the equation and everything else so Okay so I'm going to you gave me those 3 I'm going to say Edge is Roman I'm going to say <laughs> Dean Ambrose is is uh Adam Cole and then MJF is going to be Rollins is, is the main talker of it yeah, I was thinking that too. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, awesome. What's the best advice that have you gotten from behind the curtain from have it be LaRusso or Brandon or another wrestler? Somebody that said something that is just going to stick with you your whole wrestling career. If I if I had to say like the best advice that I that I ever got, it would it would have to be I would have to actually like two pieces of advice that I have gotten from um <clears throat> From um, from Chris Larusso and Brandon both. The one that I got from Chris was act was um was um actually like right like right before I started my wrestling debut. And everything it's like like don't think about things so much and just and just you know let and just you know like let go in that type of situ in types of um situations in wrestling. And then <clears throat> and then Br and then and then from um. Brandon, the best advice that I got was be yourself when you go out there. Just be you. Unapologetically, just be you out there, you know? Yeah. So the one of the hard questions, is Sammy legit you by a million or a hundred or whatever wrestling number that we want to fabricate a little bit? But is Sammy really you or is it kind of an alter ego for you without giving too much of personal life away and everything? <laughs> I would say, I would say yes. Like, like, like that is like, that is like legit, just like how I am. Like in, like in general, like how you see my emotions and everything. Like you see, I'm aggressive and defiant. That's, that's really like, like how I am, how I am in real life, you know? Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. This is the hard question. And it might be, it, no, you've been around wrestling enough. <laughs> you, you really have. Um, <laughs> What would you change in professional wrestling? Because wrestling still has horrible stigmas and this, that, or the other out there. What would you change if you could like wave a magic wand over it and just quickly erase that from wrestling? If there was like, like one thing I would change is especially for, um, for indie wrestling, I would say, I would say like more respect for like women's wrestling in the indie scene. Because like this, because like the stuff that I have that I have heard, especially at like 13 years old when I, when I went to the shows and you know have sat next to people and they just say the most um, un uncool or not right things about about women in wrestling and it still happens at 
at shows to this day too. So I really love to go in there and like, and like, if there was one thing I would change, it would be that I'd love to like change. I would love, I would love to like change like what people think by giving them, by giving them something that they can talk about for, for years and centuries down the road to come. Sammy, you have our backing 120 million percent because we've been saying that <laughs> for years. Because, listen, some of the stuff, and, and I always go back to the COVID time, essentially, that, you know, it was the men were stale. What Becky and Sasha and Asuka and everybody were doing were so amazing, yet they weren't getting their flowers. And I'll say that. Even in and around our area, if Brandon or Justin Plummer or anybody around here wants to hate on me, they can. But for people like Katie Arquette and Lawless and Danny Moe and throw yourself into it now and Ray Lynn, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, those are all freaking names that should have, listen, Pittsburgh itself, indie wrestling itself, it's okay to have a women's match be the main event. Because right, you, we don't get that enough. We have two yeah, of the greatest independent... Uh, um, I'm going to cover my own tracks. We do have two of the greatest independents in and around America between Rise and IWC right inside of Pittsburgh. I will throw that out there. So, whatever. But it's okay. You had Britt freaking Baker in Pittsburgh. You have yeah. Ray Lynn. You have Katie Arquette. That's amazing. Danny Moe. That it, they're all there. Put yeah, on a women's show people. one time. Put on a women's show one time and right. let us run with it because you mm -hmm. guys are still disrespected, and I completely agree. And the fans are completely ignorant sometimes. Yeah, they are. I'm off Especially my soapbox. Male fans. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, I'm off my soapbox. Don't don't hate on me, guys. But uh, you know, I've always felt that way. It really has. It you're the next generation that's going to take over. And I love that you're ready to take over, Sammy. I really am. Thank you. <laughs> so you talked about wrestling a little bit in general. How much do you watch? Like, will you go back into the eighties and watch, will you watch just attitude God. area from dad? Like how, what's your span of wrestling? Gosh. So I want, I watch like, like ever, like everything wrestling. I mean, like when I like when I was little and when well Peacock now which but but back in the time it was WWE Network, I remember asking asking my dad I'm like do you I'm like do you mind if I if I want if I watch old wrestling he's like he's like no go ahead knock yourself out so nice is there anybody yeah. from past years you know maybe you know throw names out like a Wendy Richter Trish Stratus Lita or anybody that you're like oh man I want to. Someday I want to incorporate some of their stuff into me. Yeah. Or anyone, or you know what, even, even better. There's, there's somebody who I, who I, who I remember watching from that time period that I really liked. Her name, her name doesn't get fr thrown too much around here. Sensational Sherry. Honestly. Yes. I, I, I loved her because, <clears throat> because honestly she'd get in there, she'd get all mess, messy with the guys and stuff and just, and just hit hard, you know. That's that's something something that I love to see. Go back if you if you want to watch some of Sherry's. I know Dad has probably led you down this line. Um, some <laughs> of Sherry's greatest stuff was in AWA. You know, some of it's on Peacock, but you have to do a little searching for it. But she doesn't get enough love. I, I completely agree. She's actually somebody in the professional wrestling business. It's transcended from like Moolah to where the women are now. And then others have just took that next step. Yeah. She, I mean, she, I mean, she, she, I mean, she is great. No doubt. I mean, I remember the first time seeing her, I was just like, wow, finally, there's another woman, woman aggressive. And I don't have to feel like the only one being aggressive. So you love being aggressive. You've probably said that four or five times. So you were just ready to get back in the ring and kick ass and take names, right? Yeah. What's your all time favorite storyline? Uh, my all my all time favorite storyline. My all time probably favorite like storyline would have to be like like in like tw like in twenty fifteen because this was. All that I was paying attention to at eight years old was like the feuds that went on 
with Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. I mean, those were like the best, like, like that was like the best, like in terms like storyline of my young life. I just remember like being so engaged in like just loving the moments that they were putting on on television. So, what what's your favorite one right now? Uh, my 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 favorite one would on would honestly like like have to be. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna say it would have to be like like the story the storyline that has been going on with um Cody Rhodes. I mean I mean that I mean that within itself has been like amazing and you could see through like the through like WrestleMania and stuff, they really put all their time and energy into all that to make give us like something that, that was great, something that was wonderful. <clears throat> and and you know, and the and the person to put the belt on, I think, especially at Mania and if you wouldn't have done it, I think there'd be a riot. It would have been Cody. Well, all right. So you think there was a riot? I'm going to stir the pot. Do you think maybe we could have gotten six more months out of this? I re- I do think we I do think we could we could have. I mean, we we could have had that because because again, but um, to me, both men are great. Both Co- Cody oh. Rhodes and Roman Reigns. So they're just you know. They're both they've both been been great in wrestling from time to time. You know, you hear a lot about like like Roman's Roman's family and how much his family has infected and how much Cody Rhodes' whole family ha, family has 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 been um in, infected, especially with um with Dusty with Dusty Rhodes from back from back in the day because because I watched um D- Dusty Rhodes stuff too and he was just you know they're all just they're all just great and now. And now they're coming in this generation and and kicking some butt, so that's awesome to see too. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I love all of it. I do. So we've been talking about all the great stuff with Slamming the Sammy and great moments and everything. Listen, there's got to be a story. There's got to be a story from training or something that you're embarrassed to tell, but we have to pull it out of you. What's your most embarrassing moment right now so far in wrestling? Um, gosh, I would say, I would say like one of my, one of the like, like my most embarrassing moments that I've ever had in wrestling is like, because in our train center, I remember like, like we, like we'd have a bathroom and stuff and my embarrassing moments had to be like walking in on somebody in the bathroom. So yeah, not horrible, but it's still, yeah, it's uneasy. It's still it's, pretty bad. Yeah. yeah, no, it's uneasy. I yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Thank you for stopping right just by saying walking into the bathroom besides, you know, hey, we're talking about Calvin Couture all of a sudden and we don't we don't need any of that, right? No, we don't. <laughs> I love Calvin. I do. I do. I I do. Yeah, me too. The the hard question I guess for you why? Why are you in professional wrestling not for the love not for anything what is your number one goal belts aside and wins aside and everything to be in professional wrestling my my number one goal in, in um, wrestling is to obviously like change like change the landscape of women's wrestling and have them you know viewed on the same level as the guys not only that but to be a role model for like for like little girls and other little kids out there to make a difference and tell them, you know, like that the impossible is not impossible. Yep. I love it, Sammy. I I, I love <laughs> what you are going to do and what you started to do. You're, you're making your own movement. You really are. So, but what are your goals for 2024 within professional wrestling now? Like what, what do you want to check off this little bucket list? And listen, I know, you want to be WWE, you want to be AEW, you want to be TNA, da, 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 da. but listen, Rome wasn't built in a day, right? No, it wasn't. Okay, so what, what's your major bucket list within professional wrestling for 2024? My my goals are honestly like, or like, I would, I would say like, ve- like very, like very small girls, like, like get, like keep getting better just like in the ring and every day on a daily basis in a in a great level and just like, like to keep, to like, to keep going and to keep improving as time passes on. Those are perfect goals because you know that, you know, get your, get your feet wet, 
in Rise and, and take over Rise and then slide over maybe yeah. to another federation or something and just don't overstep your boundaries. And I think you know what I'm talking about there. But yeah. but just continue to improve to get there. And that's that's a right. great way of putting it. It really is. I forgot yeah, to keep working hard. Yeah, keep working hard. I forgot to ask us when we were talking about training. What was the toughest thing for you to get in training? Was it, you know, the physicality essentially was there with all your martial arts background. Was it the running of the ropes? Was it the psychology part? What was your toughest thing to grasp onto? I would I would have to say like the toughest um the toughest thing for me for me to get would obviously have to be like my my character in wrestling. Like I had to work so so hard at that just to like just to like get that over the over the years and to and to and to climb that mountain so hard to reach that point where where I can have a good character inside and outside the ring. Yeah. That 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 is the toughest part sometimes because listen, we can understand just from this podcast, you can talk, you can sell on the mic, so you're good there. You have the the movement in the ring. Character de- development is one of the toughest things in professional wrestling. What you want to do on a nightly basis? Do you want to come out as a clown and you have to live your life as a clown? And I'm not saying right, you know, or do you want to be a Viking or this or that? Where you're just a badass. That, that right. loves beating people up, you know. You're you're the bully's bully, but in a good way, yeah. right? Yeah, in a good way. Yeah, we we yeah we're not condoning bullying or anything, but you're there to no. to be the the not the anti-hero. You're not Taylor Swift. Who, who who am I trying to think of? But you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. What are your What is your dream match? Listen, we 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 just talked about match number one, but we're gonna fast forward everything. When you've been in the business for decades, who is the one person you want to have a match with? But where do you want it, and what stipulation do you want with it? I would say, I would say, for like a dream match, the place that I, that I would want to have it would be would be Madison Square Garden. Yes, obviously. That is like the most famous arena in wrestling history. So it would be very great to go out there and just hear all them more than millions of people out there just just cheering for you and all that stuff. And the person that I do with, if I had to had to go with a with a male, I would say the Miz. Honestly. Really? Wow, that caught yeah. me off guard. We haven't spoken about the Miz at all. Uh, Why the Miz? I would say the Miz. His mic his mic skills are very good, especially being being um being a heel. And he's worked so hard to get to where he is, and I respect that, you know. And he really made made his own path. And some people, just like a, just like they've done to me, have, have laughed at him for it. But now look where he is, you know. He still doesn't get enough love that he deserves. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Do you want a special stipulation in it in the match or just a normal one on one? Yeah. Yeah, I would I would say for like for like a stipulation because I see these a lot. They're not too much brought out anymore. I would I would say a strap match. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I would say a strap match because that I would love to be like the first woman involved in a strap match because I just I just would like would like to grab like to have have us attached to a strap and then being able to for us to hit each other with that would be did, that would be fun. Did Dad show you a lot of like dusty bull rope matches back in the day or something? Because that's <laughs> kind of stuck in your head. Probably. And if I had to pick for a, fe- a female for this match, and obviously we were just talking about her, I'd pick sens- sensational Sherry. Okay. Because. Because that because two aggressive women with a strap that would be a show to watch. That would be that would that's unbelievable. I, I love your history, your knowledge of professional wrestling, and, and so on. And to want to make history is awesome. Um, Sammy, did I forget to bring up anything? Is there anything you want to announce? You want to tell us anything before you give your socials and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah, I'd like to say, you know, I have like a lot of things about me that make that make me me, you know. Like we talked about, you know, me me watching wrestling, like 
the movies that I've seen in wrestling and stuff that I've seen in like non wrestling are things that are like like I've watched The Iron Claw. That's a good movie. Fighting with my family, the one with with Paige. And I'm also a very like like down to earth like like I probably get that I probably get this from my mother. Oh my, I'm a very like like good person with like chick flicks. I love like like a good like romance. Okay. Like romance <laughs> movie. <laughs> just just like and you know, I'm just naming a few off the top of my head. I know things like like Dirty Dancing. You know, The Devil Wears Prada. That's a good one. And and a bunch of other '80s movies too, like The Breakfast Club. That's a classic. Um, for, yes. Yes. Yeah. I I love John Bender. He's just he's a great character in that in that movie. Just awesome. He really and is. legally blonde. Yeah. And legally blonde, they have a they have a strong character. I've seen the Elvis movie. Um Top Gun Maverick and and I've watched The Dirt by Motley Crue too, so, so how, that's a very, how did you like Did you like that? I, I thought it was a it was a great movie learning about how they um got all started up and stuff. Okay. It it was interesting, I'll put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen like other, you know, I've watched other TV shows like Cobra Kai, Law and Order SVU. Even though that one's weird, it's still it's a good one to watch. And you know, I still watch my fair share of Raw and SmackDown, AEW, them special things on A and E. And yeah. the NFL, like, and the NFL quarterback season, and like Bridge and like Bridgerton, that's a that's a that's a good one right there. And I've seen the and I've seen the rest the um, wrestler series too, the OVW one. That's that's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, that's great how they put that together. I think you and, and Hollywood like, would have a great match. <laughs> just throwing that out there. <laughs> yeah, and I also like to say that I have like. That I have like my way about myself that that I'm a that I'm a little bit of a girly girl and tomboy both because because I have th- because I love things that I have like I love like I love wearing makeup jewelry you know like bat like 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 bath and body frag- fragrance and stuff I really like dressing up in feminine clothes and like you know like fancy suits skirts dress pants anything that you could ever believe in that i mean i love dressing up nice in general because i always have my my parents when when growing up i always see like just how nice they would they would dress and put themselves together like my like my dad like my dad wears suits and my mom just like dresses up so wonderful and a an appearance means a lot especially when you're out there so so i've had that influence on me to like know how like know how to dress good and know how to look good so so it's a good thing in itself. Yeah. If you yeah. if you want to give a message to the kids, there, there's kids listening to this podcast, and they come up to you at a wrestling show mm-hmm. and say, "Hey, Sammy, you are now my Seth Rollins. You know, you are now yeah. my Becky Lynch. Or you're going to get that." What do you tell yeah. those kids that want to that want to get into the wrestling business? I would tell I would tell them, don't let you know, don't let don't let don't let people like get to you. Don't let people doubt. Don't let, you know, the doubts creep in on you. Don't, you know, have like set, have like second thoughts, you know, believe in yourself, believe in who you are and you can do anything you want to, you know? Yeah. That's a great message. That's a great message (laughs) within the wrestling business or anything else just in life, essentially. Right. All right, Sammy, give everybody your socials. Do you have any merch yet? And where are you going to be here in the next couple months? Um, all right. So, so like where I'll be in the couple next couple months, honestly, you know, wherever, wherever the Lord wants me to be, you know, this is, you know, this is my, my path and he is in control. So. Amen. So, yeah. Yep. Amen to that. But but for social media, you can find me at um, Slam and Sammy on Facebook, and that's um and for um Slammin, it's it's S L A M M I N and Sammy S A M M Y, and then on Instagram you can find me Slam Slam and Sammy official, you know S you know S L A M M I N Sammy official, and then and then Twitter I just got the I just got the um account made for that. 
you can find me at Slam and Sammy and then on and I also have a TikTok too. You can follow me there at at um, Slam and Sammy one oh one. There you go. Any merch yet that that we're gonna start making? Um we um we have merch. We we will be um releasing it soon, probably at the next um Rise Wrestling show. So yeah. Okay. And if there's somebody in like California now that says, Oh my God, I'm going to follow Sammy. Da, 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 would you be up to shipping or anything like that? Because sometimes we get questions back saying, Hey, you talk to so-and-so will they ship to me? I don't know. Why don't you reach out to them? I usually say, but to answer that question, would you ship to anybody? Yes, I would be down. Da- I would be down for anything, especially ship- shipping somebody merch. That would be, that'd be great. Awesome. Awesome. Eight by tens included soon. Yep, there will there will be nice. all that there will be all that in there, you know. We'll yeah, I'll have like I have shirt I'll have shirts out, I'll have bracelets out, I'll have just a lot a bunch of merch out, so Sammy, this is podcast number one, probably, yes, that you've been yes, on. Yes, this is. All right. Um you are welcome back on here. In fact I, I want to strong arm you to come on every so often to talk about your journey within professional wrestling, what you've done in the next six months to a year or whatever. You're always open. You have my number. Let's continue this journey. But uh, I wish you the best because, as I said earlier in the podcast, you can hear your passion, your love, your desire to do amazing things for the kids, for yourself, and professional wrestling. So, Sammy, kick ass and take names. I will keep doing that. Thank you so much. Hey, it's Gina Marie, and you're listening to the Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. Can Crusher Nation, how about that interview with Slam and Sammy? And I want to go right back to the point that I made a couple times during the interview that you can hear the emotion. You can hear the passion in everything that she wants to do in professional wrestling, from making a difference to me getting on my soapbox and you know, calling out wrestling in general still uh, about women's matches and women being on the card so much more and in and around our area and just globally as well. So, man, she is going to have an amazing future in the business. And I love how she agreed with me. Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, it's, it's going to take the baby steps of getting comfortable, getting to the next step, getting to the next step, getting titles and then getting those dark matches and then getting stuff for WWE and it's just she understands it all she really does and I love the passion that she has and to dad if dad's listening to this um way to go Uh, I love that you uh slid some 80s music in there as well and just showed Sammy the love of professional wrestling and man, she's really taking a grip onto the shield. She's never going to let the shield go. I, I freaking believe that 100%. She's never going to leave the shield go. Guys, make sure you follow Sammy. Sammy is going to be somebody, I believe, I believe, going to come on every so often. We, we have to talk about her journey. You know, legitimately, this recording happened days after her first match okay she's had one match in the business she's been in it for so long because of training in pennsylvania rules and we're going to pull the fourth wall on and all of that but one match what's next for sammy where she go what else goes on this is a journey i'm excited to watch this is a journey i'm excited to have sammy back every so often to tell us what's going on how she's kicking ass and taking names. And man, I can't wait to see her rise. I can't to wait to see her everywhere as she continues to progress all over Pennsylvania, making a name for herself and just kicking ass. Guys, this was a great interview. This is a humble human being that is going to make a hell of a difference in professional wrestling. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Make sure you tell your loved ones you love them, because you never know. (laughs) 